Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to do another thing on finishing because that seems to be my life now with these cabinets here. And I'm on the last of the doors for my upper. So once this is done, I move on to all of my base cabinets, which are all drawers. Now, I decided to do this because I get a lot of replies on my other finishing videos and uh, some people complain about uh, using wipe on poly that they get a lot of streaks and stuff like that in there. And I'm going to show you a method that I use that doesn't give you any streaks like that and it just comes out looking just beautiful. So right now uh, these have two coats on them and they already look really good. I'm going to put a third coat on it. Um, so the way that these doors started out is that I put Danish oil down. Uh, just one coat of Danish oil on everything to get the grain to pop. Uh, after the Danish oil is on there, I let it sit for 72 hours so that it dries completely. Then I put, uh, I give it a light sanding with uh, this white pad here, which just renew, uh, removes uh, nibs and nubs and a little dust on there. And then I go ahead and I wipe the whole thing down with a tack rack and get all the dust off it. I put on my first coat. Of wipe on poly uh, then I put on my second coat now in between the first and second I might hit it with um, this one here very very lightly because your first coat is very thin and that's just to you know smooth it if I need to and then I put down the second coat now a lot of times you don't even have to do anything if you're in a um, an area that doesn't have much dust you don't even have to do anything in between the first two coats but as you can see my garage door is open here because I want the air to come through and I can talk to you without getting fumes really bad in here. Now, Wipe-On Poly doesn't have too much in the way of fumes. I would say there are two brands. Uh, there's Watco Wipe-On Poly and Minwax Wipe-On Poly that I get. Now, I've always been a fan of the Minwax, and I recently tried the Wipe-On, uh, the Wipe-On Poly from Watco. And I like this, but this one does take a little bit more work to use than this one. And for my doors, I actually was using this one, and I found that um, this is rather thick. So going back to some of the um, review remarks or one of the comments was that my wipe on poly, I have problems with streaking. That generally happens when you wipe on something that is thicker. When the poly uh, gets older or it's been out in the air a lot, it starts to thicken up. And uh, when it gets thicker, you start to get streaks or, you know, because it's getting older. And also, if you put it on thick, you get some streaks. Now you want to put it on and wipe it. You don't want to put a lot of pressure, but you do want to put enough pressure to wipe it smooth. Sort of like you're wiping down a table to clean it off is what you're doing. You're leaving that red, that type of residue behind. Now I found that with this, I have to thin it down with mineral spirits, which is what this is for. But when I use um, the Minwax wipe on poly, I don't have to do that. Now there's a $10 difference between the quartz here. This one's $10 more than this one here. So I wanted to use the uh, Danish oil one because it's a lot cheaper for all these cabinets. But I found that I went back to this one and using this because this comes on thinner. It spreads out thinner. It seems to take a little longer to dry, so it has a chance to get rid of all of those marks. So if you're using the Waco Danish oil, you're having problems with it. Thin it down to get to remove all those streaks and marks. And then also, uh, if that doesn't work, buy the expensive stuff. Try that. It might change your mind. So I'm going to show you my method that I go through a single door. Now I'm just going to do this one door. I'll do all these later, but I'm going to show you this door. Now I have this one here because I have a little drop here. When I was doing the other side, I had a little drop of finish uh, show up on there. I'm going to show you how to prevent those from happening at the corners. But if they do happen, I'm going to show you a way to get rid of this. Now, I want to use the fine, the ultra fine um, 3M uh, scotch pad or whatever these pads are. Scotch Bright pads. I want to use the fine, the ultra fine one. Well, if I try to get rid of this right here using this, that little drop, it's going to mess it up. So, a little trick here, which works really well, is to take your fingernail and actually scrape that little drop off. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So, I'm just taking my fingernail, and you can hear it thumping here, and I'm scraping off that drop right there. Now, the reason that I recommend doing that is that there's still going to be a coat of finish underneath there, but you're going to get that drop off. If you try to get it off with the scotch bright, you're going to end up going over the edges and stuff and maybe go through the layer of finish. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm just going to touch it up a little bit with the scotch bright. And if I see still a little bit of a ring, like a crater ring around there, I'm going to scratch that off. And it comes off pretty easy. When it's thick, it comes off really fast. 
and then boom that's nice and smooth now so when I put my next coat on you're not going to see it so all I want to do is I want to go over this door now I've already done three coats on the back side I like to do the back side first and then do my finish side here uh, you can flip them over you can do the back first and flip them over and do the top but these uh, little painting pyramids here tend to leave little marks on them so uh, I don't like, particularly like to do that and I got a little bit of build up there I'm gonna scrape that off just like that that's all it takes and you see I'm just gonna go over this and get rid of all the nubs there now you can see that I have some white powder on here so I want to clean that off so I'm gonna use this varnish impregnated cloth here and uh, this basically gets everything up and uh, you see that I put a glove on because it does leave a sticky residue on your hand and so I don't like that and generally if I use it with just my hand I would go and wash off my hands first but because I'm in front of you guys I want to do this quickly so I did not do that so I'll get rid of this glove because now this glove has a sticky varnish on it and I'm gonna put the glove on so that I can get ready to do my wipe on so the tack cloth does leave, like I said, leaves a little bit of residue on your hand. You want to not transfer that on over to the um, wipe on. So this is an old one. Actually, it's an old can. It's been around for a while. But I still have some left. And if I was using the Danish oil, what I would do first is I'd put in a little bit of... Um, mineral spirits I put that in there first so that I don't you know get a lot in there I put that in there first then I would pour this amount in here and then stir it with a stick and that's what the stick is for right here and you just stir you don't shake it ever don't ever shake um, wipe on poly because it puts bubbles in it which are kind of hard to get rid of now if you shake it the day before the bubbles will probably dissipate it. I use these old tubs butter tubs and um, I'm just gonna pour in a small amount of finish now I'm going to do a few doors here, so I'm putting a lot more than what I would need. But um, this is what I'm going to use for these four doors and plus two bigger ones over there that are out of the screen. But that's about as much as I use. Oh, and I forgot my cloth. Okay, so I like to use old socks. And I cut them up so that they're small rags like this from the full one. And uh, if you're worried about this edge, you don't have to worry about it too much because you can wipe off anything that happens to fall on there. But if you just hit it on your hand a couple times rather hard on the edge like that you're going to knock off any loose pieces here and when i hold this cloth i'm actually going to hold it like this so i'll have it all folded up and this is the way that i'm going to apply it now i'm going to give a little bit more room here two fingers between there and like this and i want you to watch the technique that i'm going to use because i'm going to put it on and i'm going to do about a third of the door I'm a circle motion to get it on and then I'm going to wipe it like this and I'll make sure I overlap as I wipe it and that's going to get it all nice and smooth and going in that direction so everything's the same thickness you don't want one part to be thicker than the other when I do the edge after I've done all this my cloth is somewhat dry there's not any big bunch of drops of uh, varnish on it or poly sorry drops of poly on it I'm going to wipe along the edge towards this direction Wipe along the edge towards this direction to where I've gone this far. And then I'm going to wipe from the center out like this. Now, if you wipe from the center out, instead of going like this, if you go across this way, you're going to go and you're going to create a drop on the bottom side of this door. So go from the center out, center out, and then from here out. So always work towards the corners of your door when you're doing the edges and do them last. So here's what I'm going to do. Just put this right down. And like I said, it doesn't take much. You don't want to use too much. And I want to get a nice thin film across here. And again, it doesn't matter which direction I'm going here because I'm going to come back with my finish. Now, I'm going to come from this in here and I'm going to wipe it this direction and come right across here like this. And I'm putting moderate, not a lot of pressure, but I am wiping the cloth across there. I'm not just letting it run over by its own weight. And then I'm going to come across the end towards the corners like that and a center towards the corners like that now I have a nice perfectly smooth layer on here so my next layer is going to start in the middle and I'm going to wipe it across there just like this and I'm going to come into my other layer now you can tell that you're coming into the other layer because you can feel it drag on it and then from here I'm going to wipe 
and just come up. As soon as I feel that drag into the new layer, I'm going to raise my cloth like this. And that way, my new layer flows down nice and even over there and it doesn't create a line right here. And it gets all of the layers this thin. Now we do have some wind outside. I actually have some wind coming here, but I'm not worried about that because I have such a thin coat, nothing's going to stick to it. So let me get to this backside here. I'm going to have to come over here. And I'll try and stay out of your way. And again, I just put a little bit on there. And you'll get a feel for how much you do, how much you can go with it. So now this case, I am going to go this direction, which tends to build up some, some uh, finish right along this edge. And you got to watch this corner right here. Once I do that, I'm going to work my way out to that corner, out to that corner. And then, I'm gonna, oops, get rid of that bottle. Going to work my way here. And going to work my way this way. So this is just an example of how I do my finishing when I do wipe on poly. This is the third and final coat. After this, I'm, if I have some dust locked in there, I'll hit it with this lightly. That'll be all that it takes, and your finish will be perfect. By the time it's done, you'll have this smooth finish. You won't be able to see any streaks or anything in it, and it will just look beautiful. And when I look down here, I can look at the light, and I got this nice bright light over here, and I can look and see that my finish is perfectly smooth, and it's almost completely dry right here already. That's how fast the stuff is going to dry. And again, this is the oil base polyurethane. So my recommendation is the Minwax Wipe on Poly. I wanted to really use this because it was $10 a quart cheaper, but I ended up having to spend the extra money to get this one. Uh, use it in a tub. Use some old socks or any old rags, t-shirts, anything you know that doesn't give a lot of lint. And just use that technique on here and you're going to end up with a nice look and finish in the end. You won't have any big buildups, any blobs, things overlapping. Uh, that's probably the most common thing is when you stop this corner, you, you have this overlap right here and it's really thick. So by streaking it across here like that, you level everything out and it's going to look great. So try that on your next project with Wipe on Poly and I'm sure that you will be happy. Uh, I've been doing this for years with Wipe on Poly, and uh, this is always the way that I do my finishes. Now, I did talk about putting poly on a large surface area, which you can see up here, and you do that a little bit different than you do your final finish stuff for doors and things like that. So the door fronts, the drawer fronts, gonna be a little bit more of this technique to make sure that everything is smooth and looks great. Uh, on the insides, I'm gonna use, you know, brush on poly because I don't have to worry about it so much. I just wanna protect it. but. That's how I do the wipe on poly. So hopefully that helps some of you out there on the questions. I will do a video on answering all of your questions because I get a lot of questions about what can go on top of poly. What can you put wipe on poly on? Um, can you use this on top of it afterwards? All that stuff. I will uh, do one where I'll pick out all the questions that people have asked me on my other videos and including this one. If you want to leave a comment below, please feel free to do. And um, I'll try and answer all those questions as best as I can on the knowledge that I have, which is not infinite. I'm not a total expert on this, but I have been using it for a while and I do like wipe on poly when I do my finishes on my furniture. So hopefully I helped you all. Thank you for staying this long. Please do like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. Uh, really makes it, you know, so that I, I want to do more and more videos with everyone. I know a lot of people are watching and I'm hoping I'm going to see you in the next video. So take care. Bye for now.